What's up everybody? This is the Rabbit Hedgehog and... And I am Savage Seagull. Excellent. And we're going to be doing a dual ride and comparison of the Vulcan S and Rebel 500. Now many will say, well, why would you do that? The Vulcan S is nearly a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars more than the Rebel 500. Well, not necessarily. These have been around since 2014 and there can actually be multiple models of them used for the same price as one of these new. So that means that this could be a strong contender for somebody's first motorcycle. And so can this because they could be in the same price point. Now I get it, we do have a difference in size of engine, we have a difference in some of the things that they have. But they can be close enough to that first motorcycle that somebody's looking for, so which one would be the best? So we're gonna ride each bike and come back to you and let you know. Are you ready, sir? Yep, I'm ready to go. Excellent, let's do this. Okay, what do you think of the Rebel 500? Honestly, I love how the biggest difference I noticed was the weight. It was easy to distinguish. It's much lighter and those fat tires on it just make it feel nice and we're going to slow down here before we uh, into being come on let's ramp the, let's ramp this bad boy <laughs> uh, that would kill this bike <laughs> i don't know i did it on a klr it didn't kill it well that's the difference <laughs> <laughs> but this thing honestly feels nice it once the seat is broken into and once you actually start get going it's nimble it is quick for what it is I like it is a 500 and I absolutely enjoy it. I can't I can't really say anything wrong about it. The suspension actually has it's just really good. Um, I I'm running over some bumps and it doesn't even feel like I'm running over anything. Of course this may be just like just light bumps but still like on it, any other bike with a lower suspension travel you're going to feel everything and you're probably going to fly off your seat. Now the one thing I like about the 500 here is that it definitely for a 500 it does punch above its weight. When uh, Mr. Siegel over here had his 883 iron hilariously this bike beat it in drag races multiple times until we got way up there so you know drag races are a quarter of a mile and it would take him almost a mile or more to finally catch up to me whenever we started getting into the 70s and 80s and especially the 80s is when this bike kind of hits a wall but this bike was in break-in and that's the thing that was stunning this bike still hadn't even woke up yet still in break-in and was whipping an 883 without really any problem which was funny now when it comes down to it the the thing i love about the rebel is these fat tires and the nimble very narrow frame and it's very lightweight also the way it holds its weight the this thing you can just dive in and out of places like no other it is insanity how fast the rebel will change direction and do it in a very comfortable and very reliable manner now i hate the suspension i mean it has had a chance to settle and that's one thing when you get a brand new bike settling has to occur so this this one needed some settlement time but it still it still has this problem with the suspension it's still very soft and not not exactly the best suspension setup on a motorcycle it definitely <laughs> very very diving front end and everything and I mean the one thing is like this does not have the ABS option, but the brakes are still good. I mean, they're not as good as a, as a Vulcan S for sure. Now that one is a Vulcan S uh, SE. So if many people will notice that. Now it's a 2015 model, so it's a little bit older, but it still has ABS, it still has some options that this one just simply does not have. So when it comes down to it, like as an urban brawling bike, I believe the Rebel 500 has that thing beat because it's great for buzzing around town, getting in and out of traffic in a very quick manner. I mean, for a 500 punches way above its weight, like I said earlier, 
and the, the, everything is so easy to use the clutch is light and all that so this bike here for an urban motorcycle definitely is the better of the two going on a long range ride on the other hand you want the Vulcan S because the seat on this thing and the suspension eventually will wear down on you what's your RPM right now uh, yeah a, a hilarious statement there the Rebel 500 does not have a tack I can't tell you how, how much RPM I'm pulling okay yeah the, when they redid the Rebels engine when they did the CBR 500 they definitely did change it out um, and went for that lower end power they did the same thing with the Vulcan S but not as aggressively on that low end so it definitely does rev higher than the Rebel 500 when you get going. Now, of course, the Vulcan is going to be a bit more peppy because it has that 650 engine, and for some reason, someone it feels like someone tuned it just nicely and made it go a little bit quicker. But I feel like with this bike, you can do more. You can tuck in a bit more. You can dive into corners much deeper than that Vulcan will ever do and you can still have a lot of fun. I still cannot believe whenever we did that test ride, uh, that little test drag race, I was full throttling the A83, could not catch up. This thing has power and it knows it. <laughs> so, and for a 500, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's the thing about the Rebel 500, I mean, that, that bike is incredibly well balanced. I mean, it, it's a bike that if you're brand new to motorcycling, it's not intimidating power. It, it's very good and very balanced and an easy bike to get along with. And it's so simple. You don't have very much controls at all. You, you have a very simple control set and a very simple gauge. Now, I don't like the gauge design on it. What do you, I don't know what you think of it. I. I personally think they could have improved. It would have been nice if they had a tachometer like on the top or they added like a full digital. If they're going to go digital instead of this little square or rectangle in the middle, I wish they would have done a little bit more. But for what it is, it's actually pretty accurate. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just like one of those things where I, I mean, I, I mean, when you look at the two bikes, especially a new rider that's looking toward, you know, their gearing and they're worried about it, the that that is a simplistic gauge. I mean, it's not enough. It's not like information overload, but it still could have been presented better. I mean, you've got the Grom. The Honda's own Grom has a gear indication. It has, you know, a tachometer and everything. I mean, it's 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 a cheaper bike with a better gauge cluster than the Rebel 500, which is kind of sad. I, I wish they would upgrade that to have a gear counter on it. So that way a new rider could experience and know, know what's going on. Now, when you compare that in, with the Rebel or with the Vulcan S here, the newer Vulcan S is starting in 16 actually have their gear counters. Uh, that was something a lot of people did not like. They sold it as an accessory for the first couple of years, but they went ahead and added it in the regular display down below in a little square next to the speed. So you have a gear indicator on the Vulcan S now. You have a tachometer, a very big readable tachometer that's analog, and you have, of course, the digital speedo. So it's very similar in that way, but the package on this, and I know it's a more expensive motorcycle, but like I said, if you could purchase one of these used, then you're going to be able to pick up a bike that has a much better display for a newer rider to kind of understand so that way they learn how to shift, they learn what RPMs are, are the shift patterns that they need for the most power and all that fun stuff. So when you compare the two, I have to say the Vulcan wins when it comes to the, the information displayed on its on its gauge there. Honestly, with the with this Rebel, this is how low it is to the ground. It will actually be very easy for new riders to get used to. Yes, it doesn't have all the fancy gadgets as the Vulcan does, but it does have the simplicity of like 
the mid mount it's a lighter weight it's simple and i think that would be great for a lot of new riders look at this what you like and don't like about it go so one thing i really love about this is even though it is not your non-traditional cruiser it still feels really nice even it has a ford mount and for this bike it is pretty peppy for for a 650. Um, since I am not really, like I don't have a cruiser myself, so like that's something I have to get used to, but other than that, I don't really have any complaints about the bike. Anything in particular you don't like about it, like the seat or the handlebars or anything? Honestly, the positioning for me is very fine. It actually I can sit really really well. I'm relatively relaxed. I'm balanced and It just goes whenever it wants to So the thing I like about this Vulcan S I mean this is this is where having a little bit more of a MSRP comes in handy I mean this is fifteen hundred dollars more than the rebel 500 But this motorcycle has some nice things like I said you find one of these used or, I mean, even if you buy new, say that you're trying to stay below $10,000, both these bikes fit that criteria. But this one, if you spend a little bit more, not only do you get a peppier engine that's way more powerful than what you would expect, you actually get a motorcycle that has adjustable levers, five positions on both the brake and the clutch. You have, you know, flash to pass, you have a better gauge cluster, and I mean, you get a bike that it can be adjusted to you at the dealership free of charge. That is unheard of in the motorcycle industry. And that's something Kawasaki, when they brought this motorcycle out, was trying to get people back into motorcycling by saying, we can make a bike that's yours and adjust it for you for free. And that's a major thing. This bike is actually my wife's. So it is in reduced reach position, which for me as a six footer, is very small so i look weird on this bike i can look at his camera and uh, i bet you i look huge on this bike for no particular reason let's get uh savage seagull up here so have him uh get through this and take a solid look at me and you'll see what i mean so as you can tell i'm quite large on this motorcycle because it's in that reduced race position however there's two more positions but there's multiple different adjustments because they change out the seat, the handlebars, uh, and they also change where the uh, pegs go. So a peg can go into mid, or it can go into extended, or it can go into reduced. Right now, reduced. The handlebars are the same, and they actually will change the handlebar back because this one comes back further than the other. They change the seats out. So there is a long reach seat, an extended reach seat, then they have a mid reach seat, and a reduced reach. So say you're in between there, they can change those seats out. Say that you're kind of interesting shape, they could put the reduced reach seat on there, and uh, the extended reach bars and, and pegs. They can, they can swap this thing out until it fits you. And that's amazing. That is worth that thousand to fifteen hundred dollars more than the Rebel alone for a lot of brand new riders. It is not as low as the Rebel 500. The Rebel 500 seats 27.2. And as he was saying, super easy for a new rider to get their feet to the ground. This bike here is about 30 or about 28 inches. So it is taller, but still easy to get to the ground, but it's not as narrow of a motorcycle. The motorcycle is quite wide. So because of that, it might be a little bit more difficult for people with shorter legs to get their feet solidly on the ground, and that might perturb them as a newer rider. Also, forward mounted pegs, when they're first swinging their feet over, might perturb them as a new rider as well, because they, they don't know that balance yet to get their feet up and understand that position yet. So, I mean, there's some good and there's some bad and indifference on these two motorcycles, but when it comes down to it, this, this bike here is a great bike if you're gonna go out and play around town and in town. It's not as good in town though as the Rebel 500 for sure. It doesn't get in and out of traffic as easily. It doesn't, it, I mean, cause it's just a little bit longer and it doesn't turn as well as the Rebel 500. That little thing, 408 pounds is really easy to get around town. Those fat tires make it all good. 
So, between the two of them, I definitely have to say, overall, believe it or not, I would go with the Rebel 500. And the reason why I would go with that bike over the Vulcan S, A, it is cheaper, better fuel mileage, easier to insure, absolutely nimble through town. Once you get over the, the seat and the suspension, it is... A not, it's a wonderful bike. I mean, it really is a great bike. I've rode that thing for well over a thousand miles and all it does is put a smile on my face every time I'm on it. I love the thing to death. It's probably one of my favorite motorcycles that I ever rode. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with the Vulcan S, but when I go out in the garage, I feel more at home throwing my leg over that Rebel 500 every day than I do this one. And yeah, even though this is in reduced reach position, this is not as cramped as that Rebel 500. It's just that one's just so much more nimble and fun and, and a great goof off bike. So between the two of them, Rebel 500. I honestly have to agree with you. I just getting back on this bike, it just reminds me of good memories. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I love the speed and power of that Vulcan S, but overall, for the fun factor and just everything else, I have to say the Rebel 500 because this would be a great uh, beginner's bike. Yes, it doesn't have the tachometer. Yes, it doesn't have the gear indicator, but as long as you know how to count to five or six, depending on <laughs> the gear, uh, then you should be fine. Definitely. I mean, and, and like I said, there's some uh, there's some things about the Vulcan S2 that will throw off new riders. This thing's this thing has the most amazing engine braking of any bike I've ever been on. As soon as you back off the throttle, poof, you're like getting thrown forward because this thing will stop on a dime with just engine braking. But that throws that throws people off when they're brand new. That I agree with. Um, the first time I got to ride that bike, that was one of the biggest things I noticed is I let go of the throttle and then I was already dropping 20 miles per hour and didn't even know, it didn't even care what speed I was at, it was already dropped 20. <laughs> yeah, it, th it throws you off, you're a brand new rider and you're like, what have I done? And it, it, it's just compression, you know, <laughs> engine compression by itself, keeping you from going fast. I mean, it's just weird sensation especially how fast this bike does it but i mean like i said yeah sure it, it, it's a uh, one of those bikes that just punches well above its weight and they both do both bikes do that fantastically both bikes literally are bikes that are sport bikes turned into cruisers and both have the benefits of a sport bike and the benefits of a cruiser in, in weird and different ways and, and I'm, that what makes both of them lovable. I mean, that's the thing. They both do their jobs and they do them well. Sure, we got more power on this side, but then we've got more character back there. I completely, I completely agree. At first I, I had to think, I was like, no, I think uh, the Vulcans got this, but then it was just the moment that I got on this bike and started going, even though I got a little switched up on like all the controls, where the horn was, where the turn signal, and and then going from forward to mid-mount, that threw me off slightly. Other than that, this bike feels wonderful. So there you have it. The cheaper bike wins in this round. And I mean, this is not like a super shootout comparison thing. This is just, to be honest, what's the better, more fun bike? And I mean, there's nothing wrong with the Vulcan S. I mean, it has its abilities. It is a flickable motorcycle. It's a fun motorcycle, but there's just something about that daggum rebel. There's just something about its little spunkiness that you just fall in love with it and it makes you want to ride it even longer. I completely can't. Ah, I cannot <laughs> disagree with you on that at all. So at any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog. And the Savage Seagull. And that is the honest opinion. 
definitely between these two go with the rebel 500 if you're looking for a bike that's just fun exciting in its own little way so we'll catch you on that next ride folks and keep that shiny side up thank you for watching be sure to support by liking commenting subscribing and checking out my patreon and teespring pages have a good one folks catch you on that flip side